You know, it's fun having a house church. I definitely feel like we get closer together. Amen. 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 In 1 Corinthians 15, you know, again, I'm honored to be with everyone this morning. Woo! Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, uh, it's always interesting coming into the new year. God did great things, as we saw four added to our family in January. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Amen. Uh, and yet, I'm always, uh, I'm come to learn that Satan likes to attack the most when glory is close. Yes. Wow. Wow. And, uh, you know, I thought about it in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. You know, the Bible says here that therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Yeah. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Come on. You know, I love this, because God, God will create inspiring situations to inspire you. Yeah. Like, you think about the, the stories in the, the Gospels, you think about the bleeding woman who was healed. Like, that is inspiring. Yes, yes. God took a very impossible situation, and he turned the impossible into inspiring. You know, but God's calling us to not let anything move you. i got to ask you guys this morning, has Satan's attacks begun to move you this morning? Oh. Maybe this last week? Come on, bro. This last month? Come on. Come on now. Is the schemes or the storms of life starting to move you? He's trying. You know, at staff, we preached through uh, uh, Mark chapter 4 about when uh, the disciples went through the storm yeah. and Jesus was sleeping. And the title of my staff lesson was God is always in control. Yes. Because he is. He is always in control. But sometimes we can feel like those disciples who responded to Jesus, don't you even care? Right? And it's interesting here, the call is to stand firm. You know, we can't let anything move us, not even another person. The title of this morning's lesson is Let Nothing Move You. Okay. Come on, bro. You know, see, family, we're going to be uh, going to go through a lot of different situations in our walks with God. And, and we'll all, be, all these situations that we get brought through in life are going to be used to either test our faith or refine our faith. Yeah. Yeah. But That's either right. way, there's an opportunity to then become stronger in your faith. Yeah. Yeah. Check this out in Matthew chapter 4. Okay. Come on. Say it. Well, bro. Say it. You know, sometimes we go through hardships and we feel like Satan's really going after us. And we're like, man, Jesus never went through this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Why do I got to go through this? That's funny. And I think this scripture in Matthew chapter 4 gives us some great insight oh, yeah. onto what Jesus really went through. Amen. Oh, okay. yeah. So Jesus just got baptized. Yeah. Ooh. Come on. And coming out of his baptism, this happened. Matthew 4, verse 1. Come on, bro. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Wow. Mm. Okay, this is really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because the Bible says that the Spirit, God's Spirit, is what led Jesus here no. into the wilderness. No. So, so the Spirit of God led Jesus out into the woods all alone. Okay? Right. Yep. Now that's interesting, that it, that it led him to be isolated to a right. place where it was just Jesus and Satan. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. See, we'll see eventually, but the angels weren't even there with them. They, they came after the, the, the right. fact. Mm. But that helps me to understand that God will at times lead us into situations to see what's truly deep in our hearts. Mm. Yeah. Right? How, how, do you really love me? Mm. Am I really important to you? Or, or is discipleship just something you do while it's easy? Yeah. Wow. wow. Right yeah. here, the plan was to bring Jesus into the wilderness and then to be tempted by Satan. This wasn't like, hey, uh, we'll bring him in the wilderness and hopefully this doesn't happen, but it might. There's a chance. It's like, no, no, no. This is what's going to go. Yeah. Jesus, we're going to lead you out into the woods. Yeah. Satan's going to come after you here. That's the plan. This is how it's going to go down. Yeah. Right? And sometimes we think like, we're like, oh, no. Like, this can't be from God. These hardships right now, no way. Yeah. Right? And we start to just want to uh, kind of blame Satan when really God may have allowed the situation. Right? right. right? He allowed it with Job. Yeah. Satan came and he was like, hey. And then God's like, hey, have you considered my servant Job? And he's like, I have. 
He only yeah. likes you because his life's easy. Wow. Wow. He's like, all right, fine, go after him, but don't don't harm him. You can do anything you want to him, but you can't harm him and take his life. Okay. And he puts him through all the right. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this is like God's like permission. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, this is my guy. Boy. You know, I think I, I started to think about this, and, and you can write this down just for your own personal quiet time study. But in Second Chronicles thirty-two and verse thirty-one. It teaches that God will step out of the picture at times to test you and see what's in your heart. Yikes. And I believe that's what God did here with Jesus. I believe Jesus just got baptized. The spirit came on him in the form of a dove. He's then led to the wilderness to really make sure deep down what's in his heart. You know, I believe that's what God did here with Jesus. Now, now that God wasn't... It's not that God wasn't with Jesus or God wasn't with Job or didn't love them, but he stepped back and he allowed them to be tested. You guys ever feel isolated before? Yeah. You guys ever feel just so alone? Never. Right? And you got to really think, have you isolated yourself because of certain situations? Right. You know, it goes on in verse 2 and it says, well, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was hungry. Makes sense, amen? Yeah. Yeah. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, well, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, well, it's written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Well, if you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. And they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And all this I will give you, he said, if you will just bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan! For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. Sorry, I got excited. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. And serve him only. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good scripture where you find it on the spot. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> We're with you. Verse 11. Shoot, boom. <laughs> then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, Satan is here, and he's trying to get Jesus to really doubt some things. It, it, it's it always very interesting. It starts out and it describes, it doesn't use the word devil or Satan right away. It uses the word uh, right here. It says in verse 3, the tempter. Yeah. The tempter. Right? Like Satan just wants to tempt everybody. To, right. to continually think the grass will always be greener on the other side. Yeah. 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 To not appreciate where you're at now. Yeah. To not enjoy where you're at now. Not to be grateful for where you're at now. Yeah. Right? Which is funny because like in the world, we saw the kingdom as very green grass. And then we get into it and then all of a sudden we're like, I don't know, man. Maybe the grass is greener on the yeah. other side. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, you just came exactly. from there, man. <laughs> you know it's not green. <laughs> you know. Right? And, and Satan's coming after Jesus and he's getting them to doubt some things. Yeah, right. And he's getting them to doubt some things that, that really would mean the world to him. The first thing he tries to go after is his relationship with God. Yeah. And it's with these questions, it's very interesting, it's just the word is here. It says, if you are the Son of God. These are the questions Satan likes to get you to ask. If, if you are. If, if. Ooh. Satan does the same thing to us today. Yeah. Right. Oh, if you're really a disciple, would right. you be doing that? Wow. Oh, if that was really your family, would they really take care of you like that? Yeah. Oh. Right? Oh, do they if this is really God's church, would they is this if, 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 if and like all this stuff? Yeah. And Satan loves to get you to think if. Oh. Yeah. Okay. See, God's church is very interesting. The thing about God's church uh, is that it requires the whole person. Right. It requires all of you and everything you've got. That means it requires everything that you have to offer, everything you bring to the table, even it means your sin. Yeah. 
Right? Now, as God's true church, we, don't, we, we, we do expect, as, as Paul made very clear, full obedience to the scriptures. Amen? Amen. 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 And the process of transformation to Christ should be embracing and embracing by every person. So we have to understand, like, hey, Ivan's still young, but he's embracing the scriptures, and he's becoming more like Christ every day. Right. Amen? Yeah. But we understand and we accept Ivan for even the sin that, that comes with that process. Right. Come on, Ivan. Well, hey, he's going to fall short. That's he's right. going to mess up, right? That's right. But it's, it's all right. We still like them, right? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Here's where I think we can. No. Here's where I think we can go wrong. Sometimes we walk into church, we desire to be accepted in our all of our shortcomings. So we come in and we go, "Quit! Yeah, I, I, I've messed up." But you, you guys are disciples. You got to. You have to accept me. I, I've fallen short, but I need grace. I, I, I've messed up. I need the love. But we are greedy with that same grace given us when we experience sin from other people. Right. Mm-hmm. So we want to be loved as we are. And, and, you know, be patient with me. Let me get time to get through this. But we only want to love others when the person that, as they come, that now they're like us. So we, 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 we well, love me as I am, but I'm going to love you only if you're like me. Yeah. Like only if you meet my expectations. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? And we, we want to, we want to make it to heaven. Anyone here not want to go to heaven? I definitely yes. want to go to heaven. Yeah, and then, we all want to go to heaven. Yeah. I, want to I know about that other place. And sometimes we want to go to heaven without letting anybody see the parts of us that we can't bring with us. Mm-hmm. And the reality is the only way you're not going to bring that stuff with you is if you let people see it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You have to let it out into the light. Mm. See, the church requires the whole person. It requires your love and mine. Your grace and mine. Your call higher and mine. It requires your wisdom and mine. Your experiences and mine. Your obedience and mine. The church is a place of healing only when you choose to give up the healing God's given you. That's it. You know, so when you're like, man, the church needs to become more loving. Well, great. How are you becoming more loving? You are the church. Right. <laughs> great point, bro. It's funny. We're like, the church is the church. You were literally talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Come you know, on. Like, oh, the, 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 church, the church isn't loving enough. Or, or we need to learn how to sing better. Great. Like, okay. get on it. That's it. There we go. You know? I'm with you. And if you see the need, just go after it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what's awesome is that everyone can become, and you give your whole person to it, yeah. and, and, and then God's kingdom is built up. That's right. You know, God's kingdom is a fortress when you help protect its purity when you do your own. Yeah, come on. It's God's kingdom when you're truly a disciple. Yeah. See, but Satan will try and twist and turn all these opportunities in the kingdom to all of a sudden look like problems. Yeah. Because when you see something, you're like, hey, this is an opportunity. How can I help? How can I serve? How, maybe I can help give a little bit here. Great opportunity to get more involved, right? Yes. But Satan likes to twist the thing and become, oh, no, that's a problem. Yeah. This, is a, this is a situation that I don't know if I can go further past. Right. He'll get you to doubt everything that you're a part of. And it only takes the right situation to really throw you off. That's yeah. true. Satan tried three separate times from three different angles to go after Jesus. Yeah. He'll come at you from many different angles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And what I love, though, is right there in verse 11 at the end, it says, after Jesus brought off Satan and was victorious, Satan leaves him, and then the angels come to attend him. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? The angels weren't next to him helping him through the whole thing, so sometimes we're like, oh, Jesus, man, Jesus just had it way better than us. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, he's got in the flesh. So yeah, when he was tempted, like, he just had, like, an army of angels around him. So he wasn't, like, really tempted. You know what I mean? Like, he just was, like, you know, entertaining <coughs> these ideas for a little bit. No, it says when he was tempted, he was tempted. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's interesting. It goes on. He says, if you are. And he's like, man, you're hungry, dude. Turn, turn these stones into bread. Mm-hmm. Right? Isn't that interesting? He goes after his, like, physical desire right there. Right, mm-hmm. right. Right? Like that's what some of that's what Satan likes to do with some of us. What's your body craving right now? Just go for it. Right. Just do it. Right. What's the big deal? Yeah. Why wait? Yeah. That's what the world teaches. Like just give yourself those pleasures. Yeah. Just go. You don't need to wait, have self-control. What are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Right. Like if you want it, just get it. Yeah. Right? And that's what happens. Like the world is filled with internet pornography. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's just like, why wait till marriage, man? You can just go online. Yeah. Like this is that's how weird and corrupt the world's become. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Right. And they do it in so many different ways. Yeah. Right. And then he's like, all right, Satan, listen here. Like, I'm not going to live on bread alone. I'm going to live on the very word, every word of God. Yeah. 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 Which I love, because he didn't say, I'm going to live on most of the word of God, or yeah. some of the word. He said, I'm going to live on every word that comes out of God's mouth. Yeah. Nothing that comes out of your mouth. Right? right? And he's like, and Satan's like, okay, I see, I see what you're doing here. You're trying to use the word of God against me. Mm-hmm. I got the word of God, too. Mm-hmm. Let, let me quote some scriptures to you. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, Satan brings up scriptures to him. He's like, hey. He brings them to the highest point of the temple. Mm-hmm. See, Satan went to church too. Oh, don't, yeah. don't be fooled. Oh, yeah. Satan out there going to the temple and he's like, yo, Jesus, come with me. Yeah. Yeah. Come with me over here. He brings them to the highest point of the temple. Yeah. And he's like, throw yourself off. Look, the scripture says this. Right? Yeah. And now Satan is using scriptures against yeah. Jesus, who yeah. is the Word of God. Yeah. 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 But but then Jesus has to make sure he really knows his stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes after and he uses the scriptures against him. Yeah. And then Satan he brings him to the highest point in the mountain. And he shows him the, the kingdoms of the world. And he's like, Jesus, I'll give you all of this. If you just bow down and worship me. You know what's interesting? Satan is promising Jesus exactly what God promised Jesus, but without the cross. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Yeah. Without the cross. Wow. He's like, this is the easiest thing. You can you can achieve all of this. You'll be great. People wow. will worship you. People will worship mm-hmm. you. They, they'll bow down. They'll love you. You don't need to go to the cross and die. Like, that's painful. That's hard. Just worship me. Oh, wow. That's comfortable. That's wow. that's easy. That's wow. that's convenient. And I'll give you all of this. Yeah. And yet he does the same thing to us. Yeah. 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 Oh, you want to feel free. You want to yeah. feel lifted up. You want to feel loved and encouraged. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Just worship me. Yeah. Mm. You don't need to carry a cross and die to that sin. Like, mm. No, that's hard. Yeah. That's painful. Talk about that one. You don't need to do that. You can just worship me. Mm. And it's exactly what he was doing yeah. with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Great insight, bro. Wow. Yeah. You know, we got to have a conviction like Jesus and just sometimes yell, away from me, Satan. Yeah. 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 You know, you don't go care what people are saying, man. Sometimes you're just going to look at somebody, get away from me, and run. <laughs> but I just can't do this right now. Out, yeah. right? Yeah. Like sometimes you're just going to get in your car and drive off, and people are like, where is they? where are they going? <laughs> I just can't be there right now. Right? Get me out of here. You know, this is a fight that, I, I find it interesting. This was a fight that God called Jesus to go through alone. Yeah. Wow. With the promise of you get through it, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to make sure you're, you're bandaged back up. But you have to get through this on your own. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, there's battles in our lives at times that we have to get through on our own. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not that you can't pray or rely on God. You, can, you have to be in the Word of God. That's what got Jesus through this time. Yeah. But you can't always just rely on God. The disciples in your life that yeah. that's why I'm here. That's right. why I'm faithful. Right. Because the moment they struggle or they throw in the towel is the moment when you're like, I'm going to throw in the towel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. We always have, we got to make sure you have a conviction that you're here because of God, not yes. the person right. next to you. Great right. point, bro. I, I, some of my best friends have become disciples and then walked away. That's hard. Right. Yeah. But I didn't become a disciple for them. Right. Like, I'm not going to walk away because I love them. I right. love God. Like, and the only way them coming back is by me. I know me staying faithful. Right. Yeah. right. Sometimes God puts you in situations where he just wants to pull out of you and help you even see where are you at. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, you, you, maybe you've fallen off of the first temptation. Maybe you started just giving in to those quick pleasures. Right. You started turning all the stones in the bread. And you're like, oh, let's just eat it up. Yeah. 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 Right? Whatever it is. But guess what? You can get back up and you can get through that one. But don't, don't be surprised when Satan comes after you. He comes after you in a religious way. Yeah. Takes you to the top of the temple, starts quoting scriptures to you. Right. 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 And you're going to get through that one. Mm-hmm. But then don't be surprised when he starts to tell you, like, hey, I'll promise you all these good things too. And you just, you just don't need the cross. Don't die to yourself. Don't die to your sin. No, you don't need to do that. You know, I think about 2 Chronicles. You can hold your spot here, but 2 Chronicles 16. It's really interesting. One of my favorite scriptures because it's, it's slightly different. The technology, the oven's cheering me on. Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth 
to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to me. You know, I love this scripture because we think there's such a like a like a we, we don't say it. But you, you think it in your heart that when I'm weak, then I'm just going to pray and God's going to strengthen me. Right. Like you, you've convinced yourself that that's some type of doctrine in the scriptures. Yeah. When really God says his eyes are looking. He's searching the earth. You guys ever, like, I go into my kids' room sometimes, and the toys are everywhere. Yeah. And he's like, I want to find my Batman. And I'm like, oh, I don't know where your Batman is, dude. He's like, I want it. All right. So then you start looking. You scan it everywhere, right? I just picture this is what God's doing in the world. And he's looking, not for those who are weak, but he's looking for those who are fully committed to him. Yes. Which teaches us that you can be fully committed and still weak. Strength, your, your condition of strength does not depend on or doesn't dictate how committed you are. <clears throat> right? So this teaches that when you're fully committed, at times you could be weak. But guess what? God's looking for you to be strengthened. Mm-hmm. And he wants to strengthen you. Mm-hmm. But you have to get fully committed. Yeah. We think, no, 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 I'm weak. That's why I'm not committed. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you're going to keep getting weak mm-hmm. until you get committed. No, no, God, if you just strengthen me, then I'll get committed. Mm. No, that's not how it goes. You get committed, then I'll strengthen you. And God's like, I'm looking for those people. Yeah. See, Jesus stayed faithful through all three attacks, and then God strengthened him with the angels. Wow. God then comforted him. He stood firm. He did not waver no matter how hard the trials got. Right. And God strengthened him from it. Mm-hmm. You know, family, we must never give. Ah, check out Genesis 32. Come on. You know, I share this because I think uh, God gave us an incredible victory. Uh, we had 145 people at church last time. Uh, that was a record-breaking attendance uh, since I've been here. We've had the largest service we had was 134. Come on, bro. Uh, so to have 145 was phenomenal. Amen. But what can happen is there's all these new friends that want to get closer to God, want to get strengthened, want to learn the scriptures, and we start to feel overwhelmed and like we've worked really hard. And then we kind of like want to just like back away. Mm, yeah. Right? Right. And so, you know, people are moving this last week. There's so many different situations going on in people's lives. I started to feel like, man, there's storms that are coming. Mm. Like it's, it's really hard right now. Yeah. Uh, and so we talked about getting through a storm and being faithful. And then I think about, man, God is working on all of us through mm. these situations. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, in Genesis 32, in verse 22... We're going to talk a little bit about Jacob and Esau. In verse 22, it says, That night Jacob got up. He took his two wives and his two maidservants and his eleven sons, and he crossed forward of the Jabok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was now left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hand. So that his hip was wrenched, and as he was wrestled with the man, then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. And so Jacob called that place Peniel saying it is because I saw God's face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. You know, this is really interesting. you got Jacob and Esau. All right. And it was night. It was dark. It was this. I'm not a, I'm not a dark guy. Okay? Like, <laughs> night time. With, with a group of people, I'm good. By myself, everything, every story goes to my head. I'm going to miss. That van that's driving by is going to pull over. You know, every little thing. I'm scared. Uh, but you got, you got this situation. Jacob's here. And it's a dark situation in his life. Physically. He's in, it's at night. And sometimes we're, we're in dark situations in our life. Maybe in your ministry or, or whatnot. And I think it's really cool how Jacob made sure he secured his family. Yeah. He's afraid. There's some fear here about Esau and what's going to happen. He betrayed Esau and deceived him a little bit. Now he's like, man, I'm about to go run into him. He's on his way to talk to me. That's my brother. 
he might want to kill me. Like, and I'm scared. And so what he does is he gets all of his family and his possessions. He gets everyone into a safe spot. And then he stays in the situation by himself. Jacob was alone in the dark. Isolated himself because of the challenges in his life. You know, dark situations come in our life. Whatever. We get alone sometimes. And yet it's a time to wrestle with God. Yeah. Right? Really wrestling. And as he's wrestling with God, he pulled a muscle. Now, have you guys ever wrestled? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two minutes in, you're exhausted. Yeah, yeah. 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 Two, exhausted. two minutes. Yeah. He wrestled yeah. until daybreak. Wow. wow. And they were having like a conversation mid wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I went running with Jackson, and he tried to talk to me one time. I said, oh. "Stop talking. Yeah, so <laughs> Do not talk to me <laughs> at all." Like, like, I don't know. Me. He's not even like <laughs> hyperventilated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like me, I'm like <laughs> just trying to grasp air. <laughs> And these guys are like chatting. Hey, what's your name? The guy's like, oh my god. My name's Jacob. What's yours? Right? And I was like, oh my gosh. Like these guys were going at it. Yeah. yeah. Right? But I, I thought I started to think about it. He touches Jacob's socket, and he, he pulls a muscle. Basically, I would have given up. Right. Right. Like, I would have been like, dude, tap out, yeah, yeah. win. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, we went over to Eduardo's family's house last night, hung out for like five hours, watched UFC. The mm-hmm. like, guys yeah. tapped out very quickly. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there was only a 15 minute match. Like, yeah. it was like, they weren't wrestling. And these are professional fighters. Yes. Right? Jacob wrestled all wow. night long, wrenched his head, and he kept wrestling. Wow. And I thought about this, man, would I have stopped wrestling? Mm. Would I have said, hey, enough is enough? I'm feeling hurt now. Or would you keep fighting even when you pull maybe a spiritual muscle or two? Wow. Mm-hmm. You know when you're feeling a little strained and maybe someone's hurt you or something that, that was, it was hard and you're wrestling in a situation and then you feel like it got a little worse? Are you still wrestling? Are you still fighting to hang on to see the blessing from God? Come on. Or are you throwing in the towel? Does Jacob hold on? He said, I'm not letting go Amen, bro. until you bless me. That's right. I'm not letting go until I see the blessing. This guy was adamant. He was serious. We as a family can't let go until you see the blessing. Mm. God's got you in this situation for a reason. And guess what? If you don't learn now, he's going to bring you in the same situation another time. Yeah. Yeah. Another time. I I talked to a few uh, disciples this last week, and I just like, hey, you remember what happened like a few months ago? Or you remember what happened last year? Or you remember what happened like... Uh, like six years ago, like I've talked to a few people on the phone or whether it's in person, like the same thing happened. Mm. Wow. And you know why? It's because you didn't learn. So God's like, I, I need you to learn. Yeah. Mm. So here's the situation again. Right. right. Here it is. Yeah. Oh boy. So grow from it. Yeah. And then we're like, no, oh, I think I'm going to run. I'm freaking out. And you're like on the boat and you're like, do you even care, Jesus? He's like, man, I care so much. I really want you to be victorious through this. Yeah. Like, and I know you can. You know, it says that Jacob's name was then changed to Israel because he had struggled with God and with man and overcame. Yeah. I find that very interesting. As times as a man or woman of God, you will struggle and wrestle with God about the things happening in your life. And you will struggle and wrestle with men about things happening in your life. <laughs> but guess what? You can overcome. Yeah. You can get through yeah. both of them. You know, turn me to Ephesians chapter 6 as we begin to close out. Rest. Come on, rest. Funny, this lesson's much shorter than most, but three cups of coffee will drag it up. <laughs> and the spirit, amen. Yeah. Ephesians 6. Come on, bro. You know, I really think we need to step back and get to this full understanding and the importance of this scripture right here. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. All right, first, that is a command, not a suggestion. Wow. It is wow. a command of God to be strong, and strong in God's power, not your power. And then, then goes on and says, therefore, so put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Okay, so if you're going to stand firm against Satan in his schemes, the only way you can do that is by wearing the full armor of God. Right. Satan, or Jesus was able to stand firm and overcome Satan because he clearly had the full armor of God. Right? Right? Otherwise, he would have failed. Right. So if we have the full armor of God on every day, we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. Now, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, I find that really interesting because here, sometimes we get hurt by another individual, or we start to look at people, mm-hmm. and we start making our struggles become very fleshly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my problems with Sean. That MTV hat? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my problems with, with this guy and this sister. My, my problem is these people. Yeah. No, 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 no. What, what's really going on? It's a spiritual thing that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Your, pro- your problem is the battle. You've got to see Satan's trying to get in there. Yeah. You know, Sean and I, when we get in bumps, we can really get in these bumps about, like, oh, it's her. No, it's you. It's, no, it's you. It's, right? And we start thinking it's us. Yeah. And But when somebody's spiritual, they're like, Satan's trying to divide us right now. Yeah. 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 And the other person that was, like, thinking fleshly feels really convicted because you're like, Right. This has nothing to do with us. Right. 100% Satan's just trying to get in there and cause division. You know, but I I, I did find this really interesting. I was talking to a brother this last week. This says that our our battle is against the powers of this dark world. Right? Check this out in, I believe it's Ephesians chapter 2. Sorry, Colossians chapter 2. Okay. Colossians chapter 2. You know, it says here. In verse 9. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And you have been given fullness in Christ who is the head over every power and authority. Okay, so remember, God has given you fullness in Jesus. Jesus has authority over every power and authority. Remember, we just talked about our battle at times could be against the, the powers and authorities of this dark world. Mm-hmm. Yet Jesus has authority over all of that. Verse 11. In him you are also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with a circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. So here this helps us understand that, hey, your heart gets circumcised as you get, when you get baptized, because you've been buried with Christ. In your baptism, Christ is doing the work of circumcising your heart, taking away that sinful nature, so that you can now have a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone. And then it goes on to, this is the part that really got me. I usually stop right there as I'm like teaching baptism. But in verse 13, it says, when you were dead in your sins, and in your uncircumcision of your sinful nature... God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. You know, it's so cool that you can overcome the powers of this world, the authorities of this world, when you participate in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. Here it's so clear that it teaches that when you or participate in that death, burial, and resurrection at your baptism, what you're doing is what God is doing is he's disarming the powers of this world from your life. He's disarming the authorities of this dark world that they had in your life, and he's nailing them to the cross and making them a public spectacle. Amen. And when you can remember that, when you can remember what you went through and remember the cross and remember what Jesus did for you and how how he circumcised your heart in the waters of baptism, now it helps you go back to Ephesians when we're talking about the armor of God. God. Yep. A little Bible study. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And it helps you to understand that our struggle at times is not against the flesh and blood. So our struggle, when we are wrestling, even as disciples, it's not a flesh and blood thing. It's 100% Satan's coming after you to try to get these powers back in your life. Mm-hmm. See, Jesus has disarmed them. Yeah. He's disarmed the power. He's disarmed the authorities. But now Satan's trying to rearm them back in your life. Mm-hmm. He wants to bring them back into your life. Mm-hmm. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes... When? Not if. When? It's going to come. Amen? When the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist. You know, a belt holds everything together. 
Holds everything up. Many men have a belt on, right? The only time I don't need a belt is when I've gained weight. <laughs> now my pants hold up with themselves. <laughs> but you need a belt to kind of hold everything together. With armor, it holds it all together, right? The Bible says that the truth, God's truth, is what holds everything together. Right? Without the belt, you start looking sloppy, things start falling down, it's all over the place. Right? You need to know the truth so it can hold yeah. everything together. Amen, bro. And it goes on and it says that uh, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Well, the breastplate protects your heart, it protects your chest. Wow. Yeah. Everything right here is super important. Yeah. Right? Now righteousness needs to be worn right here. Yeah. Righteousness needs to protect your heart. Yeah. Right? And that's what's gonna help you right there. It goes on, it says, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So you got, you got to stay ready. you got to just be, be ready to share the gospel of peace. you got to just be always on your toes, right? you got to be, and then it says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith that can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Right? Your shield is your faith. Your faith grows by the more you get into the word of God. So the more you get into the word of God, the bigger your shield becomes. The stronger your shield becomes, the more arrows you can handle. Yeah. Right? When you first start off, you got this little like dinky shield you're hiding behind. Like, like this big. You're like, hey, I think I got it. You know? <laughs> the more you're in the word, the more faithful you are, the bigger it gets to become. Okay. If you ever seen the movie 300, such an important part of 300 was their shield. Was their shield. Yeah. Because with their shield, they could not only just protect themselves, but the man to their right. Yes. And if yes. everyone yes. could protect themselves and the person to their right, wow. then everyone would then be protected. Wow. Yeah. you got to ask yourself, is, is your faith strong enough wow. not only to protect you, but your brother and sister to your right? Wow. Come on. Come on. Is your faith there? Come on, bro. Oh. And it says it can protect you from all the arrows of the evil one. Arrow. We hear that and we think, yeah, we think like a dink, like Satan sitting there by himself like, dink. <laughs> right, like I think of 100 percent the scene in 300 yes. when it just covers the sky yeah. 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 and it just darkens the sky. It was like midday and all of a sudden it's pitch black because of how many arrows are there. Like that, when yeah. Satan wants to come after you, he's not going to be like, "Oh, I keep missing him," you know? <laughs> he's like, "Let him loose," you know? He needs to let him loose. And yet, when you have a strong enough shield, like they did, strong enough faith. You can cover yourself and then laugh and be like, I guess we're fighting in the dark. Yeah. I guess this is what we're going to do here. Yeah. And they could just laugh at the situation because like, this doesn't phase us. Right. We're totally okay. Yeah. Right? And that's what's so important about having your faith. You know, it goes on to talk about taking the helmet of salvation. You know, your helmet protects your head, protects your thinking, your understanding. Right? You've got to understand biblical salvation and it can protect the way you think. Mm -hmm. yep. Goes on to say, then take up uh, your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know what I love here is this is the only offensive and defensive yeah. piece of equipment that God's given you. Right. God's, he, you you're not going to bash somebody with your helmet. You're not going to take your breastplate off and start hitting somebody with it or your yeah. feet, right? The, the word of God, your sword, is the only thing that can be used to be defensive and offensive. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the very thing that you can get involved in somebody's life and free them from the bondage of Satan. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that when Satan comes after you, you can use to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. right? But you need to know it. Mm -hmm. right? you, can't, you can't just sit in your backpack wherever you go and think like, man, I got my sword with me. I'm good. <laughs> you need to know it. Become excellent with it. And then the Bible says, lastly, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. I feel like the prayer is like the, the, the backup call. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If you got the full armor on and Satan said it all, it's all of his heavy equipment after you and it's feeling really overwhelming, guess what? You just gotta pray. Right up. Yeah. And then like the airstrike comes and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and like oh thank God. Thank you. Thank you. But if you think you can go out every day without a piece of that equipment yeah. and not get hit by an arrow, right? Like, you, it, you're absurd. It's, it's yeah. crazy, yeah. right? This scripture changed my life because I hated reading. And obviously, having a relationship with God calls for some reading. Amen? This yes. is his word. you gotta, you got to read it to know God. Amen? Amen? I hated it. So I felt like I was in trouble every time I read. And yet, 
they helped me to see, because I was in the military, they said, hey, if you were to leave the wire and go out to combat, would you just leave, forget everything on the base, after you're done fighting, come back and then put your helmet on, your chest plate on, your boots, your, take up your weapon, and I'm like, no, that, that would be absurd, like, who would... They're like, that's exactly what you do every day when you don't read your Bible first thing in the morning. Yep. Uh -huh. When you don't pray. Come on. All right. First thing in the morning. You're, you're waking up, going out to war, saying, I don't need my armor. I don't need the armor until I go to bed. Wow. Right. It's good to meditate on the, the, the word at night. But it also says day and night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Don't forget day. And be like, oh, look, night. Night right here. Right? No, day and night. Yeah. Right? Get them both. Yeah, protect your thinking when you go to sleep. But protect it your day. Every time you go out to live for God. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we got to learn to fight as a family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I do think what I love about the new house churches is it's not just ministry. Mm -hmm. you got campus mm -hmm. in here. you got a little bit of the singles in here. Oh, you got some young married, older yeah. married, yeah. Yeah. older singles. All these things, right? Wow. And, it, and this is the family. Yeah. But i, I got to ask, how well do you know the other people in the other ministry? Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Yeah. Come on. This is the house church. Yeah. Right. right? House church is how they met in the first century, and this yeah. is the family. Yeah. yeah. Right? They walked into a house for church service in the first century. Trust me, they knew who the guy was. Right. Because right. they weren't like risking if it was a Roman soldier ready to destroy it. Right? Yeah. Like, who brought this guy out? Who's, who's this guy? Right? <laughs> Whose friend is <laughs> Whose cousin is he? Right? Like, who are you? They didn't just let it go by. No. They made sure everyone was doing well. I really want to encourage you for the next two weeks, before the next house church, get with somebody outside of your ministry in this house church. Go on a prayer walk, have a coffee, have a hot chocolate, have them over for dinner, uh, uh, invite yourself over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, show up with mac and cheese at the door. <laughs> Whatever you got to do, right? But I really encourage you to get some time with people outside of your ministry yeah. to really get closer to more people here. Right? The, 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 I love Eric showed up. He's like, wow. So many new faces. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. Yeah. Right? He's like, man, I, I used to be a part of this with my family. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 90% of these people. Like, yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. I, know, I know maybe six of you. Mm -hmm. Right? But there's so many new people. Yeah. That's a good feeling for a disciple to come back to their home now and be like, wow, there's, there's some new stuff going on right here. Yeah. Yeah. Got some new brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the more, uh, I, you know, going forward, I, I don't want to see Satan going after God's people anymore. No. Yeah. I, I hate seeing it. I hate seeing it. It wraps me up on the inside. We gotta have a conviction as a family. We're gonna fight as a family. We're gonna fight for the family. We're gonna help overcome and we're gonna build this family. Yes. But leaving here, I want you to look around, see all of God's people moving, right? And, 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 and really go after helping take Satan right out of their lives. Amen. Focus on somebody on who I can help get stronger in their faith. Who can I help shield get stronger? And let's get Satan out of that person's life because we are men and women who will not let anything move us. I love you guys. It's the God be our Lord. Come on, Ivy. Come on, Ivy. Come on, Kylie. Thank you, Preston, for that, that great word.